It's hard for me to describe the feeling I get when I discover a brand new powerful weapon or a cool gimmick that you can use. Today, my friends, I definitely have that feeling. Hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this secondary weapon. As per the usual, I'm gonna have a cheap build, something affordable that a more newer Tenno can build. But of course, we also got a maxed out setup with prime mods, galvanized mods, arcanes, basically the works, and the weapon does pack one hell of a punch. That said though, please keep in mind that my built-in guides usually take a more new player friendly tone, simply because there's a lot of information here and I want anybody watching to understand the how and the why. So if you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Tenet D+. Let's begin by having a look at how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of free shots. The Tenant D Plus is a secondary weapon with a projectile based attack, and the speed of the projectiles is pretty decent. But it's also got two very interesting gimmicks, one more useful than the other, however. You can lock on to enemies with the Tenant D Plus if you go into aim mode. You can lock up to 8 enemies at a time. Now, that double flash effect is because you got two guns and each of them needs to lock on to the target. It's very quick, it's not an issue, but the problem is it's only gonna fire a set amount of rounds at the target. And even though it consumes four ammo per target, each target will only be hit twice. Have a look. You got 13 left in that magazine. I'm gonna lock onto this guy and it's gonna get hit twice. And it did consume four ammo, so it's not exactly efficient. The problem is the developer is not allowing us to keep the trigger finger pressed down. So I locked on all of these guys and I pressed and after you get the whole lock on and hit feature, you gotta do it again. It's not ideal, but on the plus side, it's got a 60 meter range. And with 60 meters, I can do really cool stuff like this. In case you're hiding from your enemies and all whatnot. Other than that, the weapon has one more cool feature, it can automatically reload itself while it's holstered. So basically, you can switch to your primary weapon or to your melee or whatever else, just goose around a little bit and switch back to the D+, and it's gonna be already reloaded. The rate is 8 ammo every second, so basically in 9 point something seconds, the entire magazine will be reloaded. But do you really want to do that right now? Because you're gonna be missing out on one of the most amazing reload animations in Warframe. Have a look. Beautiful man, I just love that. Now of course, in time, it will get old. Now let's have a closer look at stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. Mod capacity, 80 out of 80. And if your comes with only 30 out of 30, jump into actions, plug in that Auto King Catalyst, double that mod capacity. Is it worth farming out D10 and D+, 100%. This is an insane secondary weapon, one that I highly recommend. When it comes to formatting it, you gotta format it 5 times simply so you can extract the maximum amount of mastery points, which is why for each and every format you get 2 additional levels, you get to 40, which is why you can get mag uh, mod capacity 80 out of 80. If you don't care about the mastery points, if you're like me, if mastery rank doesn't mean a whole lot to you, then free format will be more than enough, as the weapon does come with one default polarity, a V symbol or mod right. Moving on to the progenitor talk, a lot of you guys ask, hey, what's the best element for the D-plus? And that's gonna depend on what you wanna do with it. I'm gonna recommend Toxin so you can make Corrosive with a single 60-60 mod. Also, if you wanna change to Viral, that's gonna be very simple if you already have base Toxin. With the release of the brand new mods, there's not a whole lot of room on these builds, right? So choosing the right progenitor is very important. There's one more thing that you can do. Go with an impact. I can't believe I'm gonna say this. You can go with an impact progenitor, increase the impact to proc priority number one, then switch to hemorrhage. My friends, it's not worth it. It's really not, but if you wanna go that route, nobody is stopping you. Alternatively, you can simply use the weapon slash value with Carnes Stinger if you wanna make it into a slasher. But if you really must go for impact, then hemorrhage, go right on ahead for it. Let's talk Weapon Excel slot. Is it worth unlocking or not? Yes, definitely. Two fantastic mods for this one. First of all, Lethal Momentum. Projectile Flight Speed, we tested this in the Simulacrum. And in Captura, actually, because that's the best way to see if Projectile Flight Speed works and what it doesn't work on. It seems to work fine when you normally fire your gun, but the speed doesn't seem to alter when you go into aim mode. And the projectiles kind of get a mind of their own. So do bear that one in mind. Steady hands, believe it or not, is also a good idea, even though from a usability perspective, 
There's not a whole lot of recoil there. The weapon does climb a little bit. Have a look. Climb a little bit and then stabilizes at full fire rate. And the uh, ammunition is basically going to land in the crosshairs. But with steady hands, it gets a whole lot more usable than that. And it matters because this is supposed to be a precision weapon being a critical weapon. You got to go for headshots. Take a look at the effect of steady hands. It basically becomes steady as a rock. Look at that. Pinpoint accuracy, I love this one, so do consider steady hands, not just lethal momentum, which will make it easier to aim at your enemies. Accuracy is gonna be 100, and yes, my friends, you can use Magnum Force on the weapon if you so desire. Even though the accuracy drops to 15.4, let me put on some multi-shot so I can show you exactly the effect of Magnum Force on this one. It's not terrible, especially if you're going with steady hands. It's not a bad idea to use Magnum Force. But there are other great mods you can use on the weapon. Critical chance and critical damage. Sky high, 36% with a 2.2x base. That is absolutely insane, man. Especially considering we got galvanized crosshairs and we also got prime critical mods for secondary weapons, uh, Gambit and Target Cracker. The fire rate on this one also super solid at, hold on, what was it, 9.67, basically 10 fire rate with a huge magazine of 92, noise alarming, punch through of 1 meter which will help with the grenier shield dude, reload is a bit lengthy at 2.8 seconds, but again, you can overcome this by holstering your weapon and doing something else. Riven Disposition is abysmal because this is a brand new weapon. The Warframe trigger is automatic and the damage layout is as following. Impact, Puncture, Slash, the highest being Impact, and of course then you have your Progenitor damage. You can roll from 25 all the way to 60% and this, if I remember correctly, was right smack in the middle at about 42%. The weapon will absolutely delete targets and there's still performance left in it. And with that, let's talk about a standard build. Damage with Hornet Strike and Magnum Force Multi-Shot with Lethal Torrent as well as Barrel Diffusion, Critical Chance, Critical Damage with Target Cracker, Pistol Gambit and we also got Lethal Momentum for the Projectile Flight Speed. Now, this is definitely a smart idea but if you're going with Magnum Force, I urge you just to give Steady Hands a shot. We also got a 60-60 mod, the Electricity one. Then I apologize for this one, this is not exactly the most new player mod you can have. You can only obtain it from Barakitir the Void Trader and he brings electricity mods every couple of months or so. If you don't have Jolt, simply go with Convulsion instead. It will pack a greater punch and it's a better idea than the 60-60 mod up until level 120-150-ish. But after that, for actual high level targets, you gotta go for those 60-60 mods. In case you couldn't tell, this is a cheap setup. Something to get as a baseline performance for your weapon, something that a newer Tenno in Warframe might be able to afford. But then we're gonna max it all out with Prime Mods, Galvanized Mods, essentially Arcanes, the works. In the last slot, what I like to call the option slot, this is best to cater to your own individual preferences, just like the steady hands versus uh, projectile flight speed thing. For example, a whole lot of players do not like holstering their weapons. They want to play with one weapon because they wanna. So reload speed is definitely not a bad idea. And for secondary weapons, we got stunning speed. 40% reload speed, bringing it down to 2 seconds, which is manageable. And 30% status chance. Now, first we're gonna go for a corrosive approach. And then we're gonna switch it up and try to get a slash build out of the weapon. Just so we can see how it performs. Other cheap options include Augur Pact, which is, it's a sacrifice mod in the sense that Augur Pact should be used if you have nothing else available to you. 90% damage is definitely respectable. Now, this being a critical weapon, we should really max out that crit. You got a good multiplier at 2.2 and the base is awfully high. So if I go with Hydraulic Crossers, oh, let's keep in mind, I got a galvanized version too, then I'm gonna go way over 100% crit chance. That means critical chance guaranteed. Now, my friends, I know it's only while aiming, but in Warframe, to have all your shots guaranteed as crit is a pretty big deal, especially on a weapon such as this one. So we're gonna try out the weapon like so. No cheating on Gauss, no aura, no arcanes, no anything of the sort, and we're gonna test it out as per usual on the ever so lovely benchmark, the level 120! Corrupted heavy goons. We're gonna go straight for a headshot as per the- wait, you see that? That's the lock-on feature. Bloody annoying, so do this. <laughs> Boom, dead. Go to the second one. Boom, dead. Beautiful, man. Absolutely love this one. It packs one hell of a punch, but it will shine only when you max it out with galvanized mods, prime mods, essentially the works. 
Prime mods will make a huge impact on this one simply because it is a critical secondary and you got prime critical mods. As you saw there, I made use out of that one meter punch rule to absolutely annihilate the targets which stand before me. And again, getting headshots is vital with this weapon because you get a bonus headshot multiplier. The lock-on feature, honestly, I wouldn't use. I mean... Mm. Mm. Nah. Nah, I I'd rather do this. This is a whole lot more fun to me than locking onto the targets. Now, there will be times when that thing is cool, but this is definitely not one of them. What if I want to slash? Ah, I want to slash, man. Slash on everything because, I don't know, slash. Well, let's think about this one. Again, you can go for the impact progenitor if you really want to and hemorrhage. It's not a good idea on this weapon, mathematically speaking. It's not optimal, but again, if you want to, I would recommend you go with Carnage Stinger instead. You take Carnage Stinger, you get 90% slash, so slash becomes proc priority number one outside of your elemental combo, and then you get that extra status chance as well. The problem with an approach such as this is the fact that this weapon simply doesn't have a huge base status chance. What if was it? 14%? 14%. Even with two, uh, with Jolt and Carnage Stinger providing extra status, you're only up to 30%. This is, however, a possibility. Take off Jolt, go with Cold, of course. Frost by the 6060 Cold Mod. This one is easier to get. You get it from Spy Missions. And you got Vital on the weapon with Slash being proc priority number two. Now, of course, another trick is to use an unranked Frostbite. If I was to use an unranked Frostbite, hold on. Learn to type laser Frostbite, like so. I'm basically gonna drop the proc priority of Vital a whole lot closer to Slash, but the problem is I'm also nuking my status chance. Under the conditions that, you know what, I don't have a whole lot of status chance to begin with. Let's test it out like so and see how she works. One more time, level 120, Corrupted Heavy Goons. Basically, I am not recommending a slash build. The only reason I'm doing this so I can prove it's not the best of ideas. There you go. You got 7 on the viral and 6 on the slashes. Does it work? Yes. Is it better than the corrosive setup? Not in this case. If you want to have slash on everything, however, this is definitely something you can work into. Hit a target till about 50%, then watch the slashes deal the damage. You saw that 10 vitals and only 4 slashes, so even with an unmaxed out 60-60 uh, cold mod, I'm still getting more vital 10 vitals and 6 slashes there. More vitals than slash, so therefore definitely go for an unranked 60-60. If you're gonna go that route, however, you're not gonna try to get like a 60% uh, base toxin D+, you're gonna try to get a 25% base toxin D+. You get how that one works, right? That'll allow you to use a fully maxed out Frostbite, yeah? You get a higher status chance, but a lower uh, value overall on Viral, but you are also reducing your damage. These are a couple of options. Enough about cheap builds, let's talk about maxed out builds because there's a huge difference when it comes to this weapon between normal and maxed out builds. This will include Prime Pistol Gamba, Prime Target Cracker, Galvanized Diffusion instead of the normal Diffusion, Galvanized Shot is our option slot now, and of course Galvanized Crossers instead of the normal version. We got Jolt, again this is a corrosive setup. Once again, go for the 6060s over the 90s for high level content. Now, since I am using, I'm no longer using um, Magnum Force, I will be using Lethal Momentum. As for our kings, there's a bit of a discussion to be had here. If you're also using melee, especially considering that the weapon reloads by itself, it's a very smart idea to go for dexterity instead. Combo duration, holster speed, especially with the reload, that holster speed is gonna come in really, uh, really useful and it's energized very well. But... Secondary Deadhead works on this weapon because your targets are not gonna die because of procs. For example, if you were to look at my Flux Rifle review, the Tenant Flux Rifle, you can't really use Deadhead on that one because the targets die to procs. If the targets die to procs and not a precise headshot kill, that is the projectile hitting your target's head, then you're not gonna get the benefit out of this one. As for Merciless, not, not on this one. I think that we can skip Merciless in the case of the Tenant Deep Loss. And that's the setup we're gonna go for and you will see an, quite frankly, insane increase in performance. One more time, Corrupted Heavy Goons level 120. Now we are running several on kill effects and I'm not gonna use the lock-on feature because honestly it just gets in the way, but we will have to get a couple of kills. As you can see, it's no issue whatsoever. And with just a couple of kills up, my friends, take a look at the power of this insane weapon. 
target deletion with no problem whatsoever. Only a couple of bullets to completely annihilate 8 Corrupted Heavy Goons, level 120. Now my friends, let me make it perfectly clear. This is absolutely insane, but it does have a couple of issues. First of all, ammo. You're guzzling ammo like nobody's business. Now, there are a couple of ways to fix that. For example, you can drop pads or we can use an ammo mutation or something of the sort. But ideally, what I want to do is never stop firing. Is that possible? Well, of course it is possible. See, the reload. That right there is what kills me. You gotta go with Arcane Pistol if you have that one. It's not a terribly expensive Arcane and it will have a huge effect on this weapon. Take a look at that. Beautiful. Now, these on kill effects aren't really all it's cracked up to be. Some are decent and some are bad. Take a look at my buff bar, you see the critical one, the one with the four leaf clover and it's gone. From five stacks to zero, just like that. Because while the multi-shot one, deadhead, as well as the status chance one may go down to a lower stack when the timer runs out and you get the additional timer again and again, Unfortunately, the critical ones, scope and hydraulic crossers, drop the stacks completely when the timer runs out. So it's not exactly fantastic. You can keep the buffs, you can keep them up as long as you get continuously headshot kills. Now again, this only really applies to hydraulic crossers. So if that kind of mechanic doesn't really suit you, you can drop this one for something else. Keep in mind that you are getting fully stacked out 200% extra in addition to the 120 it already provides. So it is very powerful, but the buff is a bit wonky. Now, my friends, there's still one more thing that we can do, bump up everything with Warframe buffs. And for that, we're going to be using the ever so lovely Lady Mirage Prime and her fantastic uh, buffs, of course. Now, I've been overusing this fashion. How about we switch to this one? I love this one as well. Use the Tenant Diplos, match it quite nicely. Beautiful, beautiful. When it comes to our to buffs corrosive projection against heavily armored targets is definitely the way to go. I don't want you to feel forced into this one just because it's so... Ech, meta. Use whatever you want for your build. For example, maybe you're a newer Tenno with newer players. Energy Siphon is very popular because it's an easy way to get a little bit of energy back. Or perhaps your build calls for power donation, growing power or whatever else. And you want to be cheap, you use melee. It's as simple as that. Warframe Arcanes, however, have a greater impact on these weapons than the aura or anything of the sort. There are a couple of options. First of all, Arcane Avenger R5, even more critical chance, 45% bonus additive after, simply stacking on top of what you already have. As for a raw damage Arcane, Rage is for primaries and Precision is the secondary version. Now this is a whole lot of damage, take a look. On headshot, 100% chance, for plus 300% damage to pistols for 18 seconds. Fantastic options. But I think I owed you guys the pistol ear thing. In this case, in particular, just in this case, for this secondary weapon, I'm gonna drop Avenger because it already has a ton of crit it really doesn't need anymore, as long as you keep the buff from uh, Galvanized Crosshairs up. Keep in mind that Avenger does grant its benefit to primaries, secondaries, and to your melees at the exact same time. So just for the sake of the demonstration, we're gonna drop Avenger. Normally, you shouldn't really. Pistol Air, you guys know this one, it doesn't get a whole lot of use, but it's extremely powerful on the right secondary. On Pistol Headshot it says, but it's actually on secondary headshot kill, just like Deadhead, 60% chance for plus 102% ammo efficiency for 12 seconds. So essentially with this one you never stop firing. As long as you can decently aim, you never stop firing. As for a sentinel, no sentinel trick because this is a secondary weapon, so the vigilante mods do not apply. You can bump up the level to whatever. Please, D, let me spawn level 2000, 3000 and let me enable the, you know, steel path buffs as well so I can make proper tests. The problem is that testing in steel path requires me a couple of hours to stay in a survival or a defense and I'm sorry, I simply don't have that kind of time. We're gonna unpause the A so they can hit me and I can get my glorious, absolutely glorious buffs. Did I not unpause the A? Oh, I did! Activate Mirage's Empower! I used that with the helmet system, then her free ability for an absolutely insane damage increase. And one more time, for her ever so lovely, check out the animation. Oh, clones. Now, remember what I said about the party never stops? Look. You just gotta get yourself headshot kills. Party never stops. Party never stops. Party never stops. Oh, now it started to consume ammo because Pistolier ran out. Beautiful. 
absolutely insane man you are dropping one arcane for it but from my point of view on this specific weapon with these specific buffs definitely worth it because if you were to go for a status build on this one and rely on procs then deadhead wouldn't work as good because your targets are probably gonna die off to procs and not to headshots the same goes for pistolier and so on and so forth and the galvanized uh, crosshairs as well so in this particular case it works an absolute treat and one 100 recommended as for the gun itself i think it's pointless to say that i recommend it it's a super powerful secondary weapon one that everybody should have in their arsenal i recommend once again a toxin progenitor and 60 percent okay this is not a case like the flux rifle where the ideal flux rifle is a 25 percent toxin roll and I do believe that's pretty much everything, my friends. As always, my name is Ben Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. If you got any sorts of feedback for me, by all means, drop it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below, which weapon do you want me to review next? You want to see some Kuva Hex, some Kuva Grattler, Zar, or perhaps one of the Tenant weapons again? Now, before I go, it's shameless plug time. I got detailed and extensive reviews on all of the brand new weapons. How do they function? How should we mod them? And what's the best element? If you're interested in detailed, extensive guides, then look no further. Check out the channel. And if there's a weapon missing, trust me, it won't be for long. And if you want to help us make the content that you love, hey, consider supporting us via Patreon. Link in the cards right now. But until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.